गणना गणपति हवामहे कवीं कवीना उपवस्तम जयस्तराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पद आनसृण्वन्नुत साधन ओं महागणाधिपत नम प्रणोदेवी सरस्वती वाजय बिर्वाजिनी वती दीनामत्रेवत ओं महासरस्वे नम हरि ओ असत मा सद्गम तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गम मृच्चोर्मा मृतंगम ओं शाति 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 मातृदेव भव पितृदेव भव आचार्य देव भव अतिथिदेव भव ओं गुरब्रह्म गुरुर्ष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरसाक्षा परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरि ओ अद्य वाशी वेदिक वेद संस्कृत समिति चर्चा वेदिकायां सर्वेभ्य स्वागत व्याहरा अद्य दे वक्ते स्थ प्रथम वक्ता रम्या भट महोदय आर रम्या भट महोदय अंशमस्त वडवाग्नी समर इन फैर प्रलय अंड प्रलय मेक्शन आफ स्पेस द्वितीय प्रसंगमस्त वक्ता डाक्टर सीता सुंदरराम सुंदर राम अंड सब्ज अंशमस्ती लांगट्यूड ट्रयांगल सो स्वागत व्याहरा नमस्कार रम्या भट महोदय प्रथम रम्या भट महोदय आह्वयामी परिचय कृत्वा अद्य संभाषण संभाषण आरंभ इति अभ्यर्थना ई इनवैट यू टू कम टू दि प्लाटा and take this stage and uh, present your paper on padabagni submarine fire and pral and pralaya mass extinction of species dr ramya bhatti mam mahodaya please Thank introduce you. yourself and then proceed with the paper yes uh myself is uh, ramya bhat uh, i am working as assistant professor Uh, for sdnb vaishnav college for women crompet in chennai uh, my paper is vadavagni submarine fire and pralaya uh, mass extinction of species uh, i am going to present uh, uh, this uh, topic namaste sir uh, namaste to all uh, uh, i am beginning here srishti and pralaya Uh, ancient indians knew that space and time are related uh, this the creation and destruction of the universe and formation of continents that get destroyed many times or some of the natural phenomena mentioned in vedas itihasas and puranas uh, 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 puranas the hindu idea of creation is called srishti and destruction is called as pralaya pralaya is mass extinction of species a uh, srishti and pralaya make one cycle of creation their time period is called as kalpa in hindu text kalpa is referred to as a day and night of brahma the cycle of creation and destruction are permanently repetitive these changes are restored by the supernatural force whenever necessary the hindu sacred text or representation of um uh, mythology and historical traditions and they give such information in the form of stories the day time of brahma or period when earth faces many changes and again night of brahma helps in uh, recuperating the nature at the end of manvantara normalcy is restored it is very important to know about the time scales to understand and study the 
various incidents that have happened in the past. So my first uh, presentation here uh, explains about the Srishti and pr Pralaya. They are the two sides of the coin. Srishti is called creation and Pralaya is mass dis destruction of species. It is permanently repetitive at great intervals of time. Um, and then uh, there are three numbers of factors normally uh, for happening for the Pralaya because it's more focus on Pralaya. I have uh, uh, like uh, I have put in words in my PPT. There are three different types of factors. Basically, we can um, divide it into uh, three uh, types of uh, factors, which are uh, the combined forces to cause this pralaya. One group is the celestial factor, such as um, sun. Uh, from sun, we get excessive heat from uh, sun. Solar flares, that is uh, the sun spot, expansion and contraction of the sun. So one of the factor is the sun. Sun is being the very important uh, factor uh, for uh, to run the life system in this uh, year. Uh, so anything in the sun immediately it is going to affect the living beings on the earth. Secondly, uh, the factor is meteoroids and comets. Um, uh, time and again, lot of meteoroids and this comets from the universe that is from the other uh, the from the space. It comes and hits at the earth. So this also becomes again a uh, important factor uh, during the uh, one of the causes for the pralaya. Uh, for example, there are a lot of um, meteoroids and comets hitting the uh, earth at the frequent uh, periods. But um, one of the um, uh, uh, meteoroid uh, or comet which I can mention over here is uh, Chikupslu crater buried underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. So there is lots of evidences also in the past also for uh, uh, meteoroids hitting the earth. And now also we get very frequently, we can see that uh, they mention in the TV also that it uh, just passes near to earth, but actually uh, hitting will be normally very less, but passes near the earth. Such informations we are getting uh, in the media. And uh, thirdly, in the earth, earth itself is a process. We are, uh, we are living on the above the surface of the earth. There, is, there are a lot of factors up, uh, happening on the surfaces and below the uh, surface of the earth. For example, uh, if you see above the surface means we can see like uh, there is lots of um, 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 atmospheric uh, uh, changes happening on the top of the, that is on the above the earth. And inside the earth, if we see, we can see lots of um, um, we don't know, nobody has made a proper research on what is there in the core of the uh, core part of the inside the earth or uh, uh, we are just living on the surface of the earth and maximum research has been done only up to one kilometer on the surface of the earth. Beyond that, we know that ocean is there. After that ocean bed, uh, nobody has any scientist doesn't have any clear picture on what is there even beyond the um, uh, few kilometers inside the earth. They are just making um, oh, uh, they are just making some research and they are just giving us the approximately it can be like this like that they say but they don't say it very clearly nobody can uh, 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 nobody has done that research because we are not properly equipped also humans have their own limitations so these are the main factors that um, as per the modern science these are the three main factors which can uh, lead to the mass destruction of the earth. So my PPT, if you see, you, we can see the pictures of excess uh, vegetation, whatever the effects have, vegetations have. And then uh, we have uh, uh, submarine volcanoes, submarine fires being triggered, which all can lead to destruction. So these are the modern signs uh, giving us the various reasons over uh, for so many years, such, uh, such are the reasons where uh, the earth has been uh, um, uh, where earth has been facing this such uh, destructions so now what um, my paper talks is um, uh, srishti and pralaya happens at a uh, interval over a interval of time it has been already been mentioned in our puranas also and my topic is especially this vadavagni that is uh, i am telling that uh, i am here to speak about this vadavagni submarine fire which is, uh, which is also one of the uh, reasons for this pralaya, that is the mass extinction of the species. What is Vadavagni? 
what is vadavagni vadavagni is the repository of great fire under sea uh, we have been seeing now vedas itihasas puranas talk of this subterranean uh, fire that is vadavagni on various occasions and incidents this concept of vadavagni it can be called as aurvanala uh, it is also called as badavan um, badavanala or vadavanala which is mentioned in vedas um, or the hidden fire hidden under ocean and are correlated with different incidents of destruction in almost all the puranas uh, we have been seeing this frequently mentioned in all the puran uh, all the puranas so now i am going to talk where or where and all it has been mentioned when it comes to uh, uh, vedas the concept of vadavagni or phenomena of ocean fire is known to indians from vedic times the rigveda um, the rigveda mantra uh, 1032 6 the verse says uh, uh, nidhi nidhiyamanam uh, nidhiyamanam apagulham apsu pram, prame devanam vratapa uvach that is agni Uh, though agni he who maintains the laws of god informed me that though waste vast uh, lying hidden in the waters so it is mentioned in um, uh, veda rigveda that uh, agni is um, uh, agni is been lying hidden in the waters the rigveda again 8.102 that is 4 to 5 verses 4 to 5 records the fact that it was aurva brihu who placed the fire inside the ocean aurva brihu vat suchi mapna van vadahuve agnim samudra vasasam huve vatasvanam kavim parjanya krandyam sahaha agnim samudra vasasam as aurva brihu used as apavana used i call the pure agni who clots him with the sea i call the sage who sounds like wind the might that like parjanya roars who clots him with the sea the yajurveda the yajurveda taitriya samhita 467 makes note of the fact that this fire was elongated and arose from the ocean udyan samudra duta va purishat here he refers to you first rose udyan as udyan from the sun samudra or from water purishat purishat the epic ramayana uh, it this are the places where it, there has been mention of fire uh, hidden and or lying under the ocean now when we come to itihasas uh, the epic ramayana mentions ocean fire vadava vadavanala in kishkinta kanda that is uh, kishkinta kanda shirodham samatikramya tato दक्षत वानरा जलोदम सागर श्रेष्ठम सर्वभूत भयावहम इन द रायण सुग्रीवा वैल गिविंग ऑर्डर्स टू वेरियस चेफ्टियन ऑफ हिस् आर्मी टॉक्स अबउट द सबर फयर वडवा मुखा लयिंग एमबिडेड इन द ओशन अवे फ्रम द शीराबि इट आलो स्टेट दट दडवाग्नि हास् स्प्रंग फ्रम द व्रैथ ऑफ सेज ओर्वा हू ड्राप इट इन टू द ओशन तत्र तत्पज तेज कृत हयमुखम महत अस्याहु तन तन महा वेग मोदनम सचराचरम इट इज द महाभारद दट गिव्स द फुल स्टोरी ऑफ द ओरिजिन ऑफ वडवाग्नि अकॉर्डिंग टू महाभारद आदि पर्व सेज ओर्वा ऑन द अडवैस ऑफ हिस् पिता समर्ज द एंटर फयर ऑफ हिस् पेन इन टू द ओशन that fire took the form of a horse head and he is believed to be living uh, still underneath the ocean vomiting heat at all the times tatastham krodajam tata aurva agnim varunalaye utsasarja cha chaivapa upayunte mahodatau mahadya shiro bhutva yat tad veda vido viduhu चिलड्रन ऑफ 
womb. One of the women, in order to preserve her child, secreted in her thighs uru and protected to annihilate, annihilate the entire Kshatriya clan. So these are the places where it has been mentioned in um, Vedas and Itihasas. Few places. Now, uh, even in uh, Puranas, it has been mentioned as I uh, inform, as I uh, explain. So in Pura, uh, uh, in Puranas, where it has been mentioned uh, in Matsya Purana, Puranic Pralaya, in Matsya Purana, Taraka Maya fight gives creation of Vadavagni while describing the fight between Devas and Asuras. In the fight, Devas were hurt by the weapons and Indra, with, uh, with his power, created darkness where Asura could not distinguish the Deva in the dar darkness, Devas in the darkness, and they began to kill one another. Seeing this, Maya spread the Maya of Aurva and dispel the darkness, creating a fearful fire like the one that prevails at the time of destruction of the world, which started the devastation of the Devas. Devas burnt by Aurva fire sought the help of Indira, prompted by Indira, Varuna narrates the story of Aurva. Sage Urva created Aurva by the power of penance and aesthetism without the help of a woman. Urva, by rubbing his thighs with pusa grass, produced a son. In this way, the fearful Aurva was begotten from the thighs of the sage Urva. Aurva consumed everything all around and spread in all directions. This shows the quality of the fire, Aurva, to grow itself and spread itself. So, I have uh, mentioned from the Matsya Purana uh, where the part of Aurva uh, comes and uh, uh, from this Matsya Purana, from the story of Matsya Purana, we can find out Aurva fire was created by sage in Urva by rubbing the kusa grass on his thighs. Aurva would devour the waters of the ocean to quench his thirst, Aurva resides in the ocean and at the end of every yuga will dry up all the waters in the sky. As Aurva was always in want of the water to To quench his thirst and also to save the earth from him, Brahma assigned him to stay in ocean. Brahma promised sage Urva that his son will stay in submarine, in the form of submarine fire in the ocean and he will be drinking the water from the ocean. Also, Brahma promises Urva Rishi that at the end of every yuga, Aurva and Brahma will wander about, about in mutual company to repay the depths of being sunless. Later, the same fire will dry up all the waters and Brahma will, uh, Brahma will burn all the devas, asuras, yakshasas, rakshasas and all other elements. Thus, the fire, Vadava was thrown deep into the ocean. This has been mentioned in Matsya Purana, chapter 175, 58 to 61 verse. There is another verse of uh, version of origin and development of Vadavagni. Matsya Purana uh, had all this uh, above uh, information, uh, stories in the form of stories. Skanda Purana also, seven chapter 7, um, chapters 29 to 36, um, uh, gives the story of uh, Vadavagni. From its story, Vadava was born out of Thai, of sage uh, Pipaladha, and is the fire of destruction as it mentions. So now, um, coming to the uh, 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 information part, Vadavagni remains in depth of the water. It is compared to horse because of its mobility. The important fact that whenever the story, whatever the story might be, the Vrat does not change. So this is uh, the uh, Puranic, uh, Puranic part of Vadavagni, which has been um, uh, mention. Now, when we come to modern science, modern science and mass extinction, what the recent scientists discovered? The, destruct the, the destructive effects of Vadavagni is powerful, covers only the Sandhya period of Pralaya. 
the pralaya of puranas and the idea of the great deluge and global mass extinction of species in modern earth have lots of similarities in conception and action according to geologist the mass extinction of species is a rare occurrence at great intervals of time modern science points out three sources of reasons that is the sun first is sun second is meteoroid and comet and the third one is earth in the earth above the surface and under the surface on there yes so um periodical solar flares excessive activities in the sun increase in the temperature causes excessive heat results in massive death of species secondly as in the case of uh, chicxulub crater buried und uh, underneath the yucatan peninsula in mexico when a large asteroid about 10 kilometers struck the earth and this event was considered to be one of the causes of uh, uh, cretaceous paling uh, palingin extinction as natural sciences say so now when we come to modern science we can see that um, when there is more vegetation it will retain more carbon dioxide and release more oxygen excess oxygen will lead to global warming this will result in excess solar radiation this will again result in dryness in atmosphere and soil moisture it will destroy all vegetation herbivores and carnivores living beings will die most of the species will get wiped out and again from the below the earth below the earth in the earlier period dense gases such as carbon dioxide carbon monoxide other gases such as methane sulfur dioxide got deposited in the bottom of the ocean in huge amount submarine volcanoes under the ocean periodically disturb such gases once they are triggered that will result in upcoming of huge amount of gases this will affect the composition of gases in ocean water and it will kill the species in 5000 years and after that it will come outside the ocean and spread in land the gases on the surface will change the composition the greenhouse are unsuitable for life on the earth surface they will form troposphere a canopy like covering this will prevent the solar rays leaking the earth surface yet will start cooling and reaching a freezing point so in 10000 years all the species of the globe will die so this is the modern science what it uh, says uh, earth is always um, um, earth is always um, um, uh, affected by the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, affected by the other uh, sources like uh, sun or the outer atmo um, uh, by the sun or meteoroids or comets or the from the under the earth and inside the earth now we we come to uh, we can see that this is a similar concept which has been already mentioned in our puranas vedas and itihasas and puranas has also made the same sort of uh, um same sort of uh, they have put it only thing is they have put it in the form of story but the same concept is which is already there mentioned in our um text uh, in puranic concepts the ocean is the reason for cause of mass destruction in bhagavata purana it is clearly mentioned that during the period of venan due to non dharmic way earth was destroyed when modern science says there are five times which the earth has been facing mass extinction and now what we live in this earth is after so many um, extinctions mass extinctions we have been living in this earth frequently it is uh, it is exposed to uh, such activities so that is in our bhagavata purana also it is clearly mentioned that during the period of venan due to non dharmic way earth was destroyed so when we see earth is um, uh, earth is open to destructions and again creations we can see the similar concepts which is already men mentioned in our uh, text first rudra from rasatala is in charge of shaking the bottom of the sea we can refer it to volcanoes so in bhagavata purana it has been mentioned rudra from rasatala is shaking the bottom of the sea which can be referred to like the modern concept of volcano the fires from this volcano brings gold to the earth if you see my uh, ppt of this uh, 12th uh, ppt earth score a hypothesis theory by different scientist i have one of the scientist have told like most gold went there so this is one of the um, one of the ideas by the modern science whether it's proved or not the ideas are given like this more most gold went there so when we see uh, this we can make like uh, we can make out such similar concepts has been there already in our puranas also right
the uh, so from uh, first rudra from rasatala is in charge of shaking the bottom of the sea with reference to volcanoes the fire from the volcanoes bring gold to the earth it is mentioned in the bhagavata purana some modern authors also refer to the denser materials inside the layer of the earth such as gold so according to puranas gold come from rasatala where rudra stays so purana says that rasatala is the place, uh, place from where gold comes where the rudra stays and when we see this picture we can see there most gold went there that is the modern science one of the hypothesis of the modern science secondly adi sesha emitting poisonous gases can be compared to carbon dioxide which comes out of volcanic activities inside the earth under the earth as i uh, told like uh, we can compare we can have a similar concept adi sesha emitting poisonous gas uh, Uh, which comes out of volcanic activities under the sea so um this carbon dioxide doesn't dissolve in water such poisonous deposits create um turbidity currents and spreads throughout the ocean slowly so it destroys the species in lower levels first it destroys the lower level this is modern science it spreads from lower level to higher levels and travel to land and the uh, vadavagni also we say it's like a, having a horse form right and it is also uh, given like in our puranic concepts it is inside from the inside the surface of the earth it comes out so this vadavagni as it is called when such concentration of trapped poisonous gases deposit travel out in the form of the horse face horse face that horse face we can see that this trapped gases when it comes out it comes out on more pressure so it doesn't go on the land directly um, like on the surface of the earth directly it will go vertically and then it travels horizontally the trapped gases due to the um, due to the conden uh, condensation of such uh, poisonous gases when it comes out means the force itself makes it to go in a, in a straight uh, uh, vertical form and then it goes in the uh, horizontal form so if we see in the puranic concept also um vadavagni uh, is uh, like a horse a horse we can see that it has it, it just has a long uh, uh, this and goes out vertically and then um, horizontally thirdly vadavagni as it is called when such concentration of trapped poisonous gas uh, deposit travels out in the form of the horse face vadava mukha after long period of time the heat will go back into the ocean bottom and settle hence we can draw similarity between the puranic and the modern concepts as in the case of vadavagni thank you thank you ramya ji so this all your uh, over yes sir uh, thank you very much uh, it's a very nice lecture on vadavagni is an important subject which is known to many people but not known the knowing the science behind it so even the cyclones and other things where the sea or oh, or comes into the earth and all those things then because of some varavagni only that is coming that's uh, that are happening that's also being uh, talked about in the bar circles of the people so it's a very nice lecture i invite uh, people to have any questions on this anybody would have would like to discuss on this topic please welcome uh, yes uh, um, i i am here vivek garg uh, yeah, i just want to ask uh, that it's taken in the mexico uh, means what is the time period for that uh, please repeat vivek ji please repeat your question i just want to ask what is the time period of this war uh, where is taken place time period of what uh, time period uh, like the 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 time period for the deposition of this layers deposition of the layer yeah time period yes, Have you, have you said? Huh? Have you said that it's in Mexico where the when this uh, crater was buried? I just want to ask the detail of that. What is the time period for that? 
sir actually it is not the particular creator i wanted to just give us an example okay it's a example which i am giving uh, the time period if you see you no know, sir um, uh, see we have a concept like every time the earth gets destroyed and recreated right so if you see the way it is approximately we can see there um, for this mass extinctions to happen and um, um, this vadavagni is a is one of the reasons uh, one of the thing happens at the time of pralaya it can be a minor pralaya or it can be a big event also right every time when the destruction happens there are such poise uh, the destruction happens due to under from the sea means uh, this concepts uh, this volcano or submarine a uh, fire can be compared to the modern concept but time if you see you no know, exactly time like we cannot uh, match with the uh, exact time that i mean the incidents of proper time we cannot match like that it can be taken as every time the incidents happen modern science says and our puranas also say that every time such vadavagni uh, is been mentioned from veda vedas itihasas and puranas as a mass cause for the pralaya right so that way we can take it uh second request, second thing i just want to ask from the uh, from the second slide if you can uh, show yes, that yes sir yes okay probably okay uh, mr uh, dr dr prabhat kumar is uh, is they would like to speak on this issue please sir please uh, please speak out okay sir uh, if you permit me i would like to give few clarifications on what the okay. question was raised and the answer given by the uh, simadhi ramya bhat the first sure. is uh this is first thing this has happened around 65 million years ago about between 65 to 60 million years ago this has happened this is a not a simple comet it is an asteroid of 10 km diameter which has come from uh, let us say asteroid belt and uh, actually it has come from uh, a much earlier oort cloud and it was pulled in by the jupiter and saturn together they have moved it out, out of the way from that oort cloud and it was brought into the inside the solar system and as it approached earth it was deflected by jupiter and it has come and hit the titan peninsula and it has happened 65 around 65 million years back and that has that was not a mass extinction of it was a mass extinction but at that time all dinosaurs and all massive extinct to very big size uh, zoo, uh, biological specimens were present and all of them got destroyed and that is what is called extinction of dinosaurs period it was the period it was marked by the extinction of all uh, uh, gigantic dinosaurs roaming around all the places in the earth and that also triggered because of the uh, the asteroid hitting the yucatan peninsula point it has triggered another actually on the opposite side of that earth it triggered uh, mountain building activity in western ghats of india it triggered mountain building activities in the western ghat of india and the dinosaurs in the asian continent particularly in the indian subcontinent they were also destroyed at that time and there was a very heavy uh, volcanic activity in the western ghats and western ghats actually rose to a very high level and we have got few lakes in maharashtra which were three Uh, formed during that volcanic activity period that is one particular aspect and there are not just one types of meteorites or comets these are actually are five types meteorites meteoroids meteors comets and asteroids these are the five types of uh, out of the country, out of the solar system bodies which come in which are pulled in by the uh, uh, jupiter and saturn together they direct it towards earth and jupiter is actually is supposed to be the savior of earth as a planet because he pulls in all these approaching asteroids comets and every one of them and he pulls in it towards himself and avoiding them to strike the earth therefore he is actually that is a another way of puranas where indra is supposed to have cut off the wings of all heavy mountains but parvatas and their wings they were cut down by indra using his vajrayuda and this is a story given as uh, adri bhedi or naga bhedi and all those things and these are the actually these nagas are mountains flying through the earth cloud coming towards earth they are not parvatas of the earth as it is that is one secondly the aurva the story of aurva as given in puranas and in ramayana and other places and bharata also 
it tells us that the uh, it is not kartaveri arjuna's sons but it is the haihaya vamshajas who are actually had given lot of dakshinas and danas to bhrugu vamshajas and when they needed they wanted them to give it back when this rushis refused them and one of the rushi patnis hit her own child in her uru uru means thai and because he was hidden in uru he was called urva urva aurva because he had taken his birth from uru he was called aurva and aurva when he came to know about uh, the destruction of his parents by this hyas he performed a big penance and he generated heavy fire and when he was prevented from burning the all kshatriyas brahma advised aurva to take his anger and push into sea and therefore that was given as aurva agni or vanava agni or baanava agni baanava agni it is baanava agni baanava means the female species of the horse and this is also a relation to the story of sangna devi sons wife running away from sun and hiding herself in uttara kuru bhumi that is actually it is inside the earth therefore this is one of the ways of a puranic story telling us about this separation of sangna devi from sun also and this fires which were actually are burning out from this point particular point and another uh, particular way of describing this is movement of uh, volca volcanoes within the oceans they when they fire and when they open out create lot of volcanic activity then they get submerged they cone is formed and then they again the lava builds up inside that uh, 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 volcano volcano sp spreading there then therefore it moves towards on the uh, surface of the uh, base of the ocean towards another point these are actually seen in the pacific ocean movement of the volcanoes from one point to another point from that point to another point after the explosion is over that is what is happening in the yellow stone also right now yellow stone has exploded about three times in the past and it is ready for explosion in the present stage therefore this is the movement of the basin what is called lava basin below the volcano and movement through the ground surface therefore these are all and another type of type is some of the asteroids are present between the mars and jupiter there is another asteroid belt it is called oort cloud o o r t cloud which contains millions of planet planet smalls and they they are pulled in by the combined action of jupiter and saturn they come towards earth this is the uh, cycle another another point is the samudra as described in our veda and our puranas mana ranyas it is not the simple samudra on the earth but it is also the urdhva samudra which where the nebulas are created and inside the nebula there are star generating nebulas and this is the actually the, there is a horse head nebula horse head nebula within the orion nebula very close to the top point of the orion nebula therefore that horse head nebula pictures are available from nasa and other astrophysical uh, sites and this is actually you can see the horse head nebula it is actually resembles the horse head and uh, very good pictures are available in the scientific journals this is the that's why it is also called vaadava 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 means primarine form of the or mayor of the hearts thank you may I say a few words sir hello hello you are audible sir you can say ah uh, with uh, as the learned uh, participant already has explained in the yukatan uh, peninsula there was there is a report about a falling of a meteor about 65 million years ago which they say may be the cause of the extinction of dinosaurs but they it may not have any connection to the volcanism in india because at that time at about 65 million years ago 
the india itself was not in this present place it was very near to africa when and it has recently started moving at that time because of the plates movement there is a pressure given to the right hand side of the western ghats right hand side so what happened to a length of 1800 kilometers a trough volcano was formed and lava flow over the surface for a period of 10000 years bringing out much of the carbon dioxide carbon uh, sulfur dioxide dust etc and that has created the lava has created the lava plateau which is covering about 300000 square kilometer and a height of 5 kilometer and this tremendous amount of volcanic material pushed by the western ghat this again please remember sir according to sanskrit lexicon the uru word uru on the one hand means the thigh of a person but at the same time the the linear depression of a mountain is also called uru so it may represent the the trough volcano that formed in that region which operated in the region and which was more likely that the dinosaur dinosaurs were destroyed by this um this phenomenon rather than the other one other one is uh, by more or less a conjecture by some pictures and other things because why i am telling you is at 65000 million 65 million years ago where was the uh, mexico itself was located because every year it is moving from africa a few centimeters and 65 million years ago it must be very near to africa it is not in the same position so if something is moving for uh, has moved for, moved for 4 um, 4000 kilometers over a period of 65 65 million years the original falling of the or effect of the meteor will not be recognizable actually when i was a student all textbooks gave only this the lava flow in deccan region as as responsible for the destruction of the uh, the species that is the dinosaurs but later when they saw a meteor falling in the jupiter they gave this story and then uh, they have switched over to this story that this is the um, the falling of a meteor or something some mini planet or comet in yucatan region is responsible for the total destruction of the species or the mass extinction of species is the recent one which is about 62 million years ago so it is more likely that uh, the india uh, the western ghats may be the seen and the word uru also refers to that that so actually what happened is uh, the many of the references regarding the uh, the badavagni is highly localized with the, uh, the motion in this world so something to be connected to the celestial some uh, uh, star system i think it may not hold uh, uh, meaning here but because here actually the all purana say in the beginning in the beginning there was a, the rudra creation what is rudra creation in the beginning the composition of air was carbon dioxide and the again we find the sulfur dioxide etc under these condition then these some even then species develop and such species we find today in the depth of the ocean where we find terrible creatures are existing under those gases about 160 degree centigrade temperature and where carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide uh, mixing mixed water is there so that was the condition so even today some lakhs and lakhs of penta tons of carbon dioxide and uh, um, uh, methane are trapped in this and once the, uh, under the ocean once they are disturbed they mix in the ocean in the form and move as a turbidity current which can be identified something like what we can purana say sarpa adil vaadi adishesha so sarpa is moving uh, in the linear way so slowly from bottom of ocean it moves and mixes the gas and because of that the composition changes and the species die and once they come out they because being heavy you know the 
even the uh, clouds when they carry more moisture because of the heat they move along the path horizontally and then wherever they by mountain or relief they are induced they go up like that they move horizontally because of the heaviness and then they destroy the species from the earth i think that uh, the combining something with uh, uh, the celestial some uh, uh, some star system and other thing may not help here thank you sir if you permit me i would like to clarify sir hello please sir please okay sir this is uh, what uh, what uh, uh, parshati garu has said is quite uh, most of the time it is accurate but the only point is the 65 million years back as described in geology and geophysics systems it is actually earth india was not even at this point quite close to africa but it was close to the south pole of that time and australia africa south america india madagascar they were forming a single continent called gondwana land and they were broken up by this volcanic activity heavy volcanic activity india got separated from the that gondwana land and uh, south america moved towards other point and all that them got scattered they started moving in different directions and earth uh, india particularly moved across the equator and it moved towards asian subcontinent asian continent and shivalik ocean was sea was there and india crushed that sea and dried it up and himalayas rose at that particular point and the western ghats were already formed when india was moving from southern pole towards asia and because of that they were described and when, when i am talking about orion nebula and the horsehead nebula in that i am not talking about the oceans or seas on earth but it is the the sky itself the nebulas and the formation of all that it is that itself is called a ocean that ocean which is connected with the pre pralaya apas apas does not mean water apas actually apa means the finest particle state which is there before the formation of even nebulas therefore that nebula is a actually condensation of dust and molecules therefore that dust and condensation of molecules is a the body which does not glow by itself and when stars are getting formed inside that the parts have become, become visible and they can be seen and that horsehead nebula has got large number of stars which are forming this is called star generation system where stars are getting formed that's why it looks like a horsehead nebula but that ocean is not the ocean from earth it is an ocean in form of nebular particles Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, that Muthu Garaj got his own, his own, his own, his own ideas. Uh, yes, sir. Kavya Ras Muthu Garaj, please. Kavya Ras Muthu Garaj, please. Yes, sir. Namaskar, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Ramya Bhatt, for an excellent uh, talk on Bada Bhagani. Bada Bhagani, we only we hear, but now we have the lecture. With this, we could learn some of these things of how it is happening in the science, or so in the sea. my experience in this just i would like to submit is this bird bath is nothing but we are working on uh, ong is a natural gas we are extracting natural gas these are the bird bath is residues and across the sea and in depth of the sea in the ong sea gas that gas and cutting the all the hydrocarbons that we are using another thing is there is a wonderful research is going on in uh, national geophysical research institute on gas hydrates in the sea they have a nio national institute of oceanography in goa they have a sagar kanya a ship that going across the sea in depth of the sea what is the point they find all these gas hydrates across the ocean in indian ocean as well as other oceans also these gas hydrates and how to extract this is the problem that is going to be the issue now with these vedic uh, um, uh, scripts that what we have said if we analyze somebody can analyze these scripts and get lot of information and unearth these things of information from vedic literatures and apply for our uh, sciences in modern sciences in gas hydrates uh, yes. resumption from recoveries 
and uh, and also in the ONGs. This is the so this type of uh, information we had unearthed from the Vedic sciences and applying the modern sciences in recovering the gas side rays from the ocean. That is how we can make use of this Badabogni Vedic literature in our modern science. That is what I would like to share. And, uh, and thank you very much. And I appreciate your lecture, uh, Ramya Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, is, uh, I, uh, I said, and uh, your NGR, you are working in NGR, right? I worked in IICT, CSIR. This NGR is also CSIR. CSIR. Yes. CSIR, you, we have got a lot of uh, research work going on gas address from the seas. Yes, I understand that. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Now, with this, any more questions? Anybody would like to share their views or give a question, ask a question? It's such a subject, it's a vast subject. It, it, uh, it can be go on discussing like that for our together if a knowledgeable person is there. Uh, so oceanography is such a subject, still not completely uh, done research. A lot of uh, secrets are there, natural secrets are there in ocean. Still a lot of research is required to be done. So with this, we close this uh, first lecture. We'll go to second lecture. We'll invite uh, Dr. Sita Sundaramji for the Vedika, uh, I ask, I request Dr. Sita Sundaram to yes. uh, introduce um, herself and start the lecture on the uh, longitudinal triangles. Swagatam, Sita ji, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Danyavadaha. I am Dr. Sita Sundaram. I am Secretary of the Kupuswami Shastri Research Institute in Chennai and also the Secretary of Samskrit Academy, Chennai. I represent both uh, institutions. And uh, now, uh, Mrs. Lavanya Pravin will be sharing the PPT with me. She ready? Lavanya? Ma I'm here. I'm here, ma'am. Sir, can you please enable me to share the screen? Lavanya is ready. Are you on? Sir, host disabled participant screen sharing is what I'm getting, sir. Phone disabled. What is it done? Host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, host disabled participant mm. sharing. Okay. Mm. Uh, Babu, Dr. Babu, one minute. Yeah. Try now. Yeah, please try now. Sir, I'm getting the same message. Try again. Now, now he just has done that. So whom you have given authority? Babu, Lavanya, you have to give. Sir, I'm getting the same message only. Babu, make Lavanya as co-host. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, please proceed. Can I start, sir? Yeah. Namaskaram. Namaskabaye. Bhaskara Charya, in his magnum of Siddhanta Shuromani, says of the chapter Sri Prashnadikara, learned scholars are of the opinion that this science of time, since herein is described, the method of knowing the direction, the place where the celestial body is situated, and the time. Hence, I found that chapter called Sri Prashnadikara, which gives that knowledge and which abounds in very important statements and which forms the quintessence of the science of astronomy. At the place without latitude, that is the equator, whatever is the equator is the prime vertical, Tama Mandala. There is no other six o'clock circle in Mandala apart from the horizon, 
Shitija. There, the poles are at the horizon. Then, as compared to the equator, as one moves more and more north, one sees the poles with more and more altitude. Then, by whatever the measure, the pole is high up from the horizon, by the same measure, which is the latitude, the equatorial circle is southwards from the zenith. Because of the inclination of the equatorial circle, the other diurnal circles depending upon it also become inclined at their own place with the latitude. Thus, at a place with the latitude denoted by phi, because of the intersection of the celestial sphere-based circles and the terrestrial sphere-based circles, many right triangles are formed. They are called latitudinal plane figures and are explained here because of their usefulness. A latitudinal triangle is a right angle triangle constituted by the celestial sphere where the angles are phi, latitude, 90 minus phi and 90. The side opposite phi is called buja. The side opposite 90 minus phi is called koti and the hypotenuse is karna. We have the Sulba theorem, which says that the square on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. And this is applicable for all the latitudinal triangles. They are all formed by the intersections of the diurnal paths and the celestial equator with the circles of the sphere, namely horizon, prime vertical, meridian, equatorial horizon, and the decade Inclination circles. These circles clearly intersect at phi or 90 minus phi. The eight triangles are those whose elements will be entering computations in the Siddhanta Shuroman. Bhaskara in his Siddhanta Shuromani talks of many such triangles, of which eight are prominent. With the knowledge of Guja, Koti, and Karna of one of the triangles, the others can be determined by the rule of three. Puja is defined as the distance between the extremity of the shadow from the east-west line, where the shampu is at the intersection of the direction line, that is the east-west line and the north-south line. Koti is the square root of the difference of squares of the shadow on Puja, and Koti will be in the east-west direction. The Shruti or Chaya, the shadow Karna or K, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the shadow and the 12. 12 angulas is normally kept as the nomen, shampu or nomen. It follows that the measure of shadow is equal to the square root of the difference of the squares of kanna and 12, or the other way around, square root of the product of 12 added to and subtracted from karna. This is the celestial sphere and all the markings are marked here, all the points are marked here. RQ is the equator, small RQ is the diurnal circle of the sun, NS is the horizon, P, P dash is the polar axis, EZ is the prime vertical from the zenith, P, S dash is Pujya, EB is Krantijya, declination the, uh, the line, E, S dash is Agrajya, F S dash is Tadriti, F B is Samashanku, F B is Tadriti minus Kuchya, E L is the same as B D equal to Unmandala Shanku, S dash D is the second part of Agra, B L is also equal to E D, is the first part of Agra, F L is the higher segment of Samashanku. Next. Now in these you find that the diagonals EBS dashed, FPS dashed, EBF, BLE, BDS dashed, FLB are similar triangles. Why? Because angles BES dashed, EFS dashed, EFB, LBE, DBS dashed, and LFB are all five. And angles EBS dashed, FPS dashed, EBF, BLE, BDS dashed, FLB are all 90 degrees. Next. Next. 
ಲಾವಣ್ಯ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ವಾಡ್ರಲ್ ಎಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಆಂಗಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ನೈಂಟಿ ಡಿಗ್ರೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರೆಕ್ಟಾಂಗಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಬಿ ಎಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಇ ಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇ ಎಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿ ದ ಲಾಂಜಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿನೋಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಲ್ಯಾಮ್ಡಾ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದ ಈಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಸೈನ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟಾ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಸೈನ್ ಎಪ್ಸಿಲಾನ್ ಸೈನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಮ್ಡಾ ವೇರ್ ಎಪ್ಸಿಲಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಡಿಗ್ರೀಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ some more definitions are given here eb is the cross the distance between the center and intersection of the polar axis and the diagonal circle and it is equal to r sin delta where delta is the sun's declination r is the radius r denotes the radius b s dash is kujya the distance between the points of intersection of the polar axis and diagonal circle and horizon and diagonal circle and this is equal to r sin phi sin delta divided by cos phi E s dash is agrajya the longitudinal distance between the point where the given diagonal circle meets the horizon ns and the east point and this is equal to r sin delta by cos phi fp or samasham ku the downward perpendicular from the intersection of the prime vertical samamandala and the diagonal circle and it's equal to r sin delta by sin phi fs dash that is the the arc jiva kanda on the diagonal circle and is equal to r sin delta divided by sin phi cos phi fp the higher segment of tadriti that is kuchya subtracted from tadriti next next now we go to the first of the eight latitudinal triangles here the karna or the hypotenuse is all denoted by capital k the koti is the nomen 12 angula nomen of shanku and the bhuja is the shadow and it denoted by s vaskara says bhujo akshaba kotir inangullo na karno akshakarnah kalu moolam etat kshetrani yani akshabavani ತಾಂ ವಿದ್ಯೆವ ಮಾನಾರ್ಥ ಯಶಃ ಸುಖಾನ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಟ್ರಯಾಂಗಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಈಕ್ವಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಕ್ವಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟಿಯಲ್ ಶಾಡೋ ಅಸ್ ಭುಜ ದ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಅಂಗುಲ ನೋಮನ್ ಎಸ್ ಕೋಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಹೈಪಾಟನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಅಕ್ಷಕರ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ದ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಟ್ರಯಾಂಗಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಆಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆಂಗಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಕೋಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಭುಜ ಇಸ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಡಿಗ್ರೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಕೋಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಕರ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಫೈ the second triangle you have the radius as a hypotenuse radius denoted by capital r r cos phi is the koti and r sin phi is the bhuja lambajaka kotir at aksha jeeva bhujo atra karna tribuje tribajya the lamba which extends downward from the intersection of the prime meridian and the celestial equator is lambajya denoted by r cos phi and this is the koti akshajya or sar sin phi which is the distance between the foot of the lamba and the center of the earth is the bhuja distance between the center of the earth and the tip of lamba is the earth radius and this is the hypotenuse trijya or capital r from the definition we have that the angle between koti and bhuja is 90 degrees and the angle between koti and karna the latitude phi next this is the third uh, triangle which is found in the celestial perg marked with the same color kuchya bhujah koti ha apakramajya karno agraka cha tribujam tatedam the third triangle is the one represented by ebs s dash here angle ebs dash is equal to 90 degrees and angle be is dash phi the agra chapa the longitudinal distance between the point where the given day and night circle meets the horizon and the east point r sin of that is agra agra ja is the hypotenuse kranti ja or r sin delta is eb the distance between the point at which the day and night circle and the unmandala intersect and the east west line 
This is the protein. Agra is the S dash, the hypotenuse, R sine delta by cos pi. The distance between their end is called kujya, D S dash, or R sine delta, R sine pi sine delta divided by cos pi. This is the bhuja. So this is another aksha triangle. Now, Krantichya squared, we have the Sulba theorem, which says the, the sum of the squares on the two sides is equal to the sum of the square on the hypotenuse. Then just proving that Krantichya squared plus Kujya squared is equal to R sine delta squared plus R sine phi sine delta by cos delta squared, which comes to R squared sine squared delta by cos squared phi, which is Agrajya squared. Thus, Kujya BS is Bhuja, Apakramajya or Krantichya is the Koti, and Akrajya E S dash is the hypotenuse for this triangle. The fourth triangle. The fourth triangle again is denoted by these violet triangles, the same as in the celestial sphere and outside. It is the one represented by, next, the fourth triangle is the one represented by F E S dash here, angle F E S dash is equal to 90 degrees and E F dash, E F S dash is phi. FP or Samashamku is the downward perpendicular from the intersection of the prime vertical, Samamandala, and the diagonal circle, and is equal to R sine delta divided by sine phi, and this is the koti. Agrajya equal to R sine delta by cos phi is the buddha, and Tadriti, the arc jakanda, on the diagonal circle, is the hypotenuse equal to R sine delta by cos phi sine phi. Next. Now, Samashamku squared plus Agrajya squared you get it is equal to, after expansion, it is equal to Tadriti squared. Thus, Agrajya E S dash is Bhuja, Samashanku E F is Koti, and Tadriti F S dash is the hypotenuse. Next. So, triangle number five is shown in both places, in the celestial square and for outside for calculation. Next. In the fifth triangle, represented by E F B, E F B, B, F is 90 degrees and E, F, B is 5. Apamajya by Krantija R sin delta is the Bhuja. B, F, Tadriti diminished by Kujja is the Koti. And F, B, Samashanku, R sin delta by sin phi is the hypotenuse. Now, Tadriti minus Kujja, we calculated that is equal to um, R sin delta by cos phi multiplied by square of cos squared phi divided by sine phi cos phi, which is equal to r sine delta cos phi by sine phi. Next page. Next. Tadriti minus kujya squared plus kantija squared is equal to r squared sine squared delta by sine squared phi, which is samasanku squared. Thus, kantija eb is bhuja. Tadriti diminished by kujya is the koti, uh, bf is the koti, and samasanku ef is the hypotenuse. Next. This is the fifth triangle, which is represented by the yellow triangle, both on the celestial, uh, celestial circle and outside for calculation. The sixth triangle, BLE. Here, angle BLE is equal to 90 degrees and angle LB is phi. Now, EL is equal to BD, which is equal to Unmandala Shanku, which is equal to R sine delta sine phi, and this is the Bhuja. ED. R sine delta cos phi, the first segment of Agrajya equal to BL, and this is the Koti. EB, Apamajya or Krantijya, the R sine delta is the hypotenuse. So, solving the Sulba theorem, first segment of Agrajya squared plus Unmandala Shanku squared is equal to R square sin squared delta, which is equal to Krantijya squared. Thus, first segment of Agrajya ED equal to BL is the Koti. Unmandala Shanku BD equal to EL is the Bhuja and Krantija is the hypotenuse EB. The seventh uh, triangle is represented by the blue triangle, the celestial sphere and outside. It is BDS dash is one in which BDS dash is 90 degrees, angle S dash BD is pi. Now Unmandala Shanku BD, that is R sin delta sin pi, is a 40. The second portion of Agrajya. D S dash that is, that is R sin delta by sin squared pi cos pi is a bhuja and shitija or kujya B S dash that is R sin delta sin pi by cos pi is the hypotenuse. 
Next. So, one mandal shampoo squared plus second portion of agarajya squared after calculation comes to pujya squared. Thus, the second portion of agarajya D is dashed is pujya. BD or one mandal shampoo is 40 and pujya B is dashed is the hypotenuse. This is the last latitudinal triangle mentioned by Bhaskara. It is the uh, triangle BFLB. Next. In one which is it? He says for this, Kandam Yedudum Samavrutta Shanko, Tadrite Tavata Koti Karno, Agradi Kandam Udayevam Ashtau, Shetrani Abut, Aksha Bhavani Tavat. The eighth triangle FLB is one in which angle FLB is equal to 90 degrees. Angle BFL equal to pi. FL, that is Samashanku, diminished by Unmandala Shanku, which is R sin delta by sin pi, minus R sin delta sin pi, is koti. FB, that is Tadriti, diminished by Kujya, is the Karna. The first segment of Akirajya BL is R sin delta cos pi, which is the Kujya. Next. So this calculation we have done. Samashanku diminished by Unmala Shanku squared is equal to this, separately calculated, which is equal to R squared sine squared delta cos power 4 pi divided by sine squared pi. Tadriti minus Pujya is equal to R sine delta cos pi divided by sine pi. Thus, Samashanku diminished by Unmandala Shanku squared plus first segment of Agraja squared becomes equal to Tadriti minus Pujya the whole squared. So, the first portion of Agraja ED equal to BL is Pujya. FL, the upper portion of Samashanku is Koti and Tadriti minus Sujya FP is the hypotenuse. Next. So these eight triangles, I have put them for uh, easy uh, reference in a table. So Bhuja you have Palaba, uh, Koti you have uh, 12 Langula Shanku and Karna you have Pala or Akshajya. And in the second triangle you have Akshajya, Lambajya and Trijya. The third one you have Kujya, Apamajya, and Agrajya. And the fourth you have Agrajya, Samashanku, and Tadriti. And the fifth one you have Apamajya, Tadriti, Les Kujya. And second segment of Agrajya, Unmandala Shanku, and Kujya. And the last one, first segment of Agrajya, the higher segment of Samashanku, and Tadriti. Thus, we have here eight Aksha triangles described. There are infinite number of such triangles. The radius multiplied by the Kotis or Bujas and divided by the Karna are called Lambajya and Palajya, R cos phi and R sin phi. The arcs of these, R cos phi and R sin phi, are called Lamba and Pala. By multiplying the R sin of the latitude by Koti and dividing by the corresponding Buja, we obtain the Lambajya. By multiplying the R sign of the pole latitude by the Buja and dividing by the corresponding Koti, we obtain the Takshajya. Since the triangles are fuller, having the same angles, pi, 90 minus pi, and 90, the law of proportion holds. Therefore, the measures of Buja by Karna or Koti by Karna or Buja by Koti are the same in all the triangles. Now, Krantija or R sign delta is multiplied by Karna in of the latitudinal triangle and kept in two places. One is divided by its own koti to get agrajya. The other is divided by bhuja to get samashanku. Thus, you keep on developing more and more uh, identities of the celestial sphere. Karna multiplied by agrajya and divided bhuja is tadriti. Koti multiplied by tadriti and agrajya and divided by karna and bhuja is samashanku in two different ways. This Samashanku multiplied by Buja and divided by Koti yields Akrajya. Upper segment of Tadriti divided by Koti and multiplied by Karna gives Samashanku. Two operations are done with Prantijya. It is multiplied by Buja divided by Koti or divided by Koti multiplied by Buja. The result that is obtained is first is Kujya, the other one is upper segment of Tadriti. The sum of these two becomes the whole Tadriti. Kujya and Apamajya are multiplied by Buja and Koti respectively and divided by Karna. The first result is Agragra or second segment of Akrajya 
and the second result is agradi or first segment of agrajya together they become agrajya the first segment of agrajya and krantija are both multiplied by bhuja and respectively divided by koti and karna to give the shanku when the sun on his diagonal circle is situated on the anmandala or six o'clock circle next to illustrate the usefulness of the latitudinal triangles baskara has posed some questions and he has also added the solutions a few of these examples are given below the example one verse 80 of siddhanta shiromani when the longitude of the sun is four rashis and 15 degrees that is 135 degrees the shadow of the nomen is 12 units and it is west if you are well versed in jyotisha say what is the latitude dinakare tari vairi dala tite narasama naraba par dingmuki bhavati atra pato uta vedane kadaya tantrika tatra palabam now from triangles 1 and 3 we have palaba divided by 12 is equal to krantija by square root of samashan q squared minus krantija squared therefore palaba is equal to 12 into krantija divided by square root of samashan q squared minus krantija squared next now here samashan q is the hypotenuse krantija when the sun's longitude is simartha or 135 degrees is a bhuja the square root of the difference of squares of the above two gives sadriti subtracted by bhuja which is the koti so this is an aksha triangle the samashanku of above is 2431 and krantija when the sun's longitude is 135 is 15 less than 988 that is 987 minutes and 48 seconds so 12 into krantija divided by this you get that big numbers you get the answer as 5 minutes and 20 seconds as the answer next example 2 verse 92 of siddhanta shramani o oh, mathematician please tell me the magnitude and the longitude of the sun if at a place on a particular day pujya is 245 and tadriti is 3125 the relevant sanskrit word these words reads thus yatra kshitijya shara siddha tulya that is 245 syat tadriti tattva kura kurama sankhya that is 3125 tatra akshabarko ganaka prakshva ched akshaja kshetra vichakshano asi if you are well versed in this then please tell me the magnitude and the longitude of the sun if at a place on a particular day pujya is 245 and tadriti is 3125 from triangles 1 and 3 we have pujya by krantijya is equal to palaba by 12 and from triangles 1 and 5 we have krantija by tadriti minus pujya is equal to palaba by 12 so multiplying both we have pujya by tadriti minus pujya is equal to palaba squared by 12 squared therefore palaba squared is equal to 144 into pujya by tadriti minus pujya therefore palaba is equal to square root of 144 into 245 divided by 3125 minus 245 which comes to 3.5 This krantija is equal to 12 into 245 by 3.5, which is 840. From this, you can calculate the longitude. Next, the third example I have chosen is verse 94 of Siddhanta Sharomani. It is given that the sum of krantija, samashanku, and tadriti plus pujya is 6720, and the sum of pujya, agrajya, and krantija is 1960. I shall consider him. Who finds palaba and longitude of the sun from these data as the moon which blooms the lotuses, and I shall also salute him after saluting the sun. Krantija samashanku tadriti yutim kujo nitam bhikshe jo bhimshati ashwarato mitam ataparam shastyanta tandre mitam kujya grap. ज्योतिर्वित्त 
then a plus c plus e divided by b plus d plus f is also equal to x by y. We use that in this uh, example. It is given that the sum of Krantija, Samashanku, and Dadriti less Kujya is 6720, and the sum of Kujya, Agrajya, and Krantija is 1960. Now, from examples 1, 3, 4, and 5, we have Krantija by Kujya is equal to Samashanku by Agrajya, is equal to Dadriti less Kujya by Krantija, is equal to 12 by Palaba. Therefore, Palaba is equal to 12 goes up, 12 into sum of Kujya, Agrajya, and Krantija divided by Krantija, Samashanku, and Tadriti, less Kujya. Now, this is 12 into 1960 divided by 6720, that is equal to 3.5. Next, that is equal to Palakarna is equal to square root of 12 squared plus 3.5 squared is equal to 12.5. Now, from triangles 1 and 3, we have Palaba by Kujya is equal to 12 by Krantija, equal to Palakarna by Agrajya, equal to Palaba plus 12 plus Palakarna divided by Kujya plus Krantija plus Agrajya. Therefore, Krantija is equal to 12 into sum of Kujya plus Krantija plus Agrajya divided by Palaba plus 12 plus Palakarna. That is 12 into 1960 divided by 3.5 plus 12 plus 12.5. That is equal to 12 into 1960 by 28, which comes to 840. The longitude is determined by the reverse process. Next. Now I'm showing some similar triangles. It's easy to find out from these. These two are similar triangles. Therefore, you can Kujya by Krantija is equal to Palaba by 12. So Kujya will be equal to Krantija into Palaba by 12. Next. To find out Agrajya. You can take these two third and the first triangle. Krantija by four. Next. Similarly, the Samashanku, Samashanku by Krantija is equal to Karna by Bhuja. Therefore, Samashanku is equal to Karna into Krantija by Bhuja. Next. To find out Tadriti, Tadriti by Samashanku is R by R cos by Therefore, Tadriti is equal to Samashanku into Karna by 40. So, Bhaskara has thus defined the eight prominent latitudinal triangles in detail. Since the eight triangles are similar, we get any number of proportion by the rule of three. These are helpful in establishing the relationship between the various celestial entities involved. Bhaskara has also emphasized their usefulness for computation of place, time, and direction of celestial bodies. Thank you very much. This is a project which I did for INSA, Siddhanta Shuromani, and the Garaganita chapter. And uh, the Vashna Dikara and the Latitudinal Triangles is part of that. Thank you. Dhanivada. Madam, I, my one question, anything that you have uh, deducted out of this, any new thing you have uh, deduced? No, I was, I was very frankly, I will tell you, I was simply fascinated by this. Imagine Bhaskara sitting and looking at the sky and finding out so many triangles. These do not appear in any other astronomical text. Tantra Sangraha or uh, Suddhan, Surya Siddhanta, any, any text. No, they don't appear in any text. I was just fascinated by it and so I took up that subject. So as it is what Bhaskara has told you, you have you, you, you explained here, right? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I thought anything new deductions are there. Nothing, okay. nothing. And I was, I was, I've been wanting to uh, do this. Now, can that anything can be done? New, new research can be done on this? We, 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 definitely, definitely. Is anybody is taking he up in case He uses only right? the law of proportion. So whenever there is any en missing entry, he uses this and he puts it there. That's all. Any research is going on on this in KSR? Huh? Any research is going on on KSR? In, on this? No, no, sir. No, sir. We did the project. I did it under Dr. Eba Sri Ram. I was uh -huh. research associate under him. And we uh -huh. finished the uh, Grahaganita portion of the uh, Siddhanta Sharam. Okay, so I just don't appear at the Out of interest, I'm asking now, as uh, a secretary of KSR, you know, what are the projects that are under uh, execution in KSR? And what are the research projects there, mainly? 
KSRI. What KSRI is doing now? No, KSRI because I basically I'm a mathematics student, I'm not an astronomy. I'm okay. only specialized in mathematics and arithmetic mm -hmm. and algebra. So I find this difficult, but I have worked under Dr. Sriram and he has helped me. And I have told him that I will be presenting this. Uh, it's very no, I understand. I, out of, out of, uh, There's nothing new that I have come across, sir. Very frankly. I understand that. I understand that. I am asking a different question. Hmm. Since you said that you are the secretary of the KSRI. Yes. What are the present projects of KSRI now? What KSRI present is doing? Present project, many, many books they are coming to, out with. Uh, for the sake many of books, audience, uh, I want to explain to the audience the what KSRI is doing now. Yeah, many subjects and... Uh, Three uh, students are doing math. They, I'm, I'm not uh, their guide, but I'm coaching them. Okay. Three, uh, uh, three papers are going. Three uh, PhD students are learning under me. There are various other topics also we are doing. Okay. Various books are coming out, including uh, Badavagni and all these. Uh, they are coming out as books. So, because a lot of research has been done. On the average, how many papers uh, are being produced in KSRI per year? Uh, in 2021, mm. we had eight students who got their degrees in February. Okay. Eight and students in KSRA took their degree in 2021, but that was a record. Uh, which because subjects? now uh, 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 the number of students each person can take, they all reduced that. Okay. Uh, okay. Each person can take only four students now. How do you get funding for all this? Very difficult with begging bowl. I am the secretary. I don't uh, hesitate to say that because we are dependent only on philanthropists. On what? On don't what? get aid from either Delhi uh, or Chennai. Okay, so it's only on uh, people's interested people yes, who sir. donate. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Now totally request... dependent on philanthropic contributions. On people who are interested to support KSR. Yes, they have to support us. So it's mostly projects we get and we alert people and they, we ask them to do the project. Okay. Like uh, Mr. who is now uh, listening now, he's also doing a project. For us. You get sponsors for that project. Hmm. Yeah. But if you ask me to, they, if I ask them for, uh, you know, to pay my salaries, no. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> but I need to run my uh, institute. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I request uh, audience to raise their doubts or questions or share their opinion or they share their knowledge, whatever they, way they want to do. Please, let us use this discussion platform for knowing about the subject on the latitudinal triangles or any other subject related to that. Anybody would like to throw light on this? The mathematics is a tough subject, not general subject, it assumes. It <laughs> it's not a general a, subject. <laughs> <it's a> general. <laughs> so other subjects, can anybody talk anything? Yeah, can really specialist away. subject. <laughs> Here they cannot speak as they like. They have to speak <laughs> on what, <laughs> what is specifically required. Yes, so, so Prasad, uh, please. Namaskar, madam. Namaskar. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, actually, yes, you told me generally the mathematics is not a general subject. So uh, I have a basic mathematics session from 6th of June, and uh, but I like to say, see that uh, everybody participates, and it will be very interesting. I assure that it will also, uh, when it is learned and given to the students of say six, seven, eight class, mm -hmm. they will, uh, they, they, that the fear of mathematics will go, and, they, and that non-subject, I mean that uh, what is called that interest that uh, sweetness of the subject they will realize and they will get it uh, more uh, into, uh, grabbed into it. I mean, they'll go into it. That will be very beneficial, I think. I mean, if the all the course, the different courses include mm. uh, um, breathing mathematics in their syllabus, it will mm. be highly beneficial. Yes. Thank you. Madam, we are uh, running a Sanatan Dharma course. Three months course we are running. Out of that, uh, Mr. Gautam Mukherjee is taking up the Vedic mathematics. In that he is going to coach Vedic mathematics, which he who spoke now just now. But the gentleman is uh, going to take Vedic mathematics coaching for us, and uh, we thank you for uh, associating with us. 
Mr. Prahlad Kumar would like to share his views. Prahlad Kumar ji, please. She has presented one of the wonderful papers uh, heard till now. And this is actually very enlightening, highly informative. And is actually, it also proves that uh, hundreds of years back, Indian mathematicians, particularly those who expounded Shruba Sutras, they have come out with what is now called Pythagoras theorem. It was already discovered and it was being used in our Vedic Krishis. And through Shruba Sutras, which explained the construction of so many activities going on along with Yajna Vedikas and all those things together, and which has been used by uh, Baraha Mihra, Arya Bhatta, and Bhaskara Acharya. And all these people have proved the ancient uh, knowledge of Indian mathematicians to the core and such high authority in coming out with astronomical features, which they could actually observe and present yes. it through yes, mathematics. Sir. That is yes, sir. wonderful. And her uh, presentation actually proves the efficacy of these principles in coming out with practical results. Thank you, Bera. I like to call it uh, no longer the Pythagoras theorem, but the Sulba theorem. Sulba theorem. Yes, it should be called. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much, sir. theorem. Then, uh, Mutigaru, would you like to speak? Hi, sir, Mutigaru. One, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, it is a very yes, interesting, yes. but it is a quite an knowledgeable one. And longitudinal triangles. But latitudinal. Lati latitudinal. Latitudinal. Latitude, yes. Now, what I feel is uh, these things has to come into the applications. How we apply these things in the modern maps. For instance, if you see the Sanskrit Panini grammar. The application of Sanskrit Pranani grammar has been used in the computer logics so that the improvement in the software and the speed and etc. can be utilized with the applying the Pranani Sutras. Similarly, this type of uh, mathematics of these uh, triangles can we apply for the theories in the computer logics for betterment of uh, designs and uh, this application, we have to think that uh, it must go to the youngsters so that they can assess these things and uh, this knowledge can be used in the computer logic, hardware and software. That is my opinion. Just to say thank you, Sita. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mutigaru. So, I hope uh, no more questions from the audience. Uh, if no questions are there, we will close the session. And Western Summit is very much grateful for the presenters and particularly the, the Secretary of KSRI who sent many papers to our project. The, the, the roots of modern science, the basic, the roots of modern science in Western Sanskrit Vangmayam. For our project, for this project, KSRI has presented maximum papers. We thank KSRI and particularly I thank in person when Sita Sundaramji is here, the Secretary, the Secretary of KSRI. We thank you, ma'am. You have sent excellent papers for us. Nice of you. Very nice and very support, Very good support from you. And uh, I would. I am thinking with an idea of uh, having a conclave of uh, research associations in the country. Just like SRI, Bandarkar, and like this, there are so many research associations are there in the country. Why not you arrange a conclave of the people and see and enlighten the public, this, what services you are doing and what more do you need to uh, progress further. So the type of uh, any activity you are going to take will support Vaisam Samti, will support Vaisam Samti's main aim is to promote, the unify the Sanatana Dharma activity associations and the promote the uh, associations which are striving for the survival of protection, preservation of Vaisam Samti, Vaisam Samti, Vangmai, Vaisam Samti, Vangmai. So in that process, our, uh, we are conducting seminars and uh, trying to associate various dharmic associations. And we did like that uh, dharmic seminars in 2016 and 17 on uh, Sanskr 16 on, Sai, uh, on the Sanskriti and Sanskriti and Sanskritam. And 2017, we did Sanskritam uh, and Bharati Kalavaibha. 
now we are doing sanskritam and science and similarly i there will be a good prospects will be there and the government also in come to come into the light if we arrange a conclave of the research associations in the country <laughs> on sanskritam angmayam why don't you take up this uh, i would like to discuss this in detail in future if you have got a time please call me any time we will discuss on this issue i am the president of the vyasan samiti and i would like to support the type of activities please sita ji yes. yeah. yeah i would We're like very faint i would like to hear your uh, i would like to hear your uh, response for this would you would you get me what i am talking no i am not able it's not audible okay. i was telling Ah. There was like you, K. S. R. I. Bhandarkar, and so many other yes. institutions are there. Yeah, very nice idea. Main service for the research of Sanskrit and Angmaya. Okay, why not to have a conclave and yes, make sir. a unified effort? Yeah, I agree with you. We should have yeah, exchange not, of ideas. Yeah, why not to initiate some actions like that? We will also support for that. Okay. Our some committee is interested to support such type of activities of unifying the people on yes. these lines. Okay, sir. so kindly take up this and yes. if any assistance is required or any any support is required where some some people are also interested to support such type of activities we'll do that okay. uh, we can discuss in future on this uh, topic if you have got a time any time please call me we'll discuss yes yes sir we'll do that thank you thank It's you very good idea conclave exchange of ideas what yeah, we are actually, doing yeah arrange a conclave ksri or bandarkar this type of initiative only can conduct that okay not a novice like me say you people are working for so many years kesar has started over 70 or 100 years before we we'll contact them are also working for so many years mm -hmm. and you people are having lot of knowledge lot of support lot of grandalayam lot of library and you are uh, you deserve to arrange conclave such a of conclave please do that 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 makes the lot of impact on the public yes and enlightenment to the younger generation and their inferiority complex will go away and they will know what work is being done a great institutions like you please take up these things yeah, i'll uh, i'll uh, pick with my people and i will uh, let you know thank you very much so with this we close today's session thank you very much for everybody for attending this session in the evening uh, losing your nap after lunch धन्यवाद हरि ओम सर्वे सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कच्छे दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 ओम सहना वबतु सहनाशंकर्वे सच्चम धर्म सर्वे जना सुखिनो गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षी जनगणमन रिक्वेस्ट एवरीबॉडी टू स्टैंड अप एंड बीइंग बीयू Re uh, recite Janaganama game. Thank you. <clears throat>
Thank you, ma'am. Shall we close? Any uh, chart? Mm -hmm. You you have uh, approved papers uh, of these two mm -hmm. two webinars. Pardon? You have approved final papers for these two webinars. Final papers. Whom you are asking? You. What do you want? Final papers. Uh, do you have final papers for these two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. I have sent you. You want it? Uh, send me. And I sent it already to you. I will send again. Yeah. Okay. Send. Uh, Final papers means revised papers by these people. Uh, all, revised, all revised papers, if you can send. Yeah. I will send rev all revised papers. Okay. Okay. Shall we close this? I will close it. I don't need to do it.